In the study of physics and any science for that matter, graphs play an integral role. Just as it is important to know how to interpret graphs, so it is to know how to draw them. The question that this short video is trying to answer is how do we know which physical quantity is to be taken on which axis? Is there a convention? Or can we take any physical quantity on any axis? Of course there is a convention. To understand the logic behind the convention, let us consider the following sentence. The temperature of a body is directly proportional to the heat supplied to the body. Let us spend a thought for this sentence. The sentence says something we all know. If we heat a body for longer time, then its temperature will be higher provided its state does not change. Also, logically we know that one has to heat first and then temperature increases. Thus, we choose quantity of heat and hence it is independent, while the temperature depends on the amount of heat supplied. The point we are trying to drive at here is that while drawing a graph always there is an independent quantity and a dependent quantity. Thus, the convention is while drawing a graph we take the independent quantity always on the x-axis while the dependent quantity is taken on the y-axis. Thus, heat is taken on the x-axis and temperature on the y-axis. Let us take a few other examples. In a simple pendulum, the time period increases as length increases. This means a long pendulum takes longer to complete one oscillation than a short one. Thus, the time period of a simple pendulum is dependent on the length of the pendulum. Length, therefore, is the independent variable because we can choose it and is measured on the x-axis. And time period, the dependent variable, is measured on the y-axis. In a distance time graph, the distance covered by a body increases as time increases. Thus, distance depends on time. We therefore take the x-axis as the time axis and distance on the y-axis. If we were to draw a graph of Newton's second law, then force would be the independent quantity as the amount of force applied is our choice and therefore independent and acceleration depends on the amount of force applied for a given mass and hence a dependent quantity. Thus, force would be taken on the x-axis and acceleration on the y-axis. Another familiar example is that of Ohm's law, where the current flowing through a conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference maintained across the ends of the conductor. Thus, we take current along the y-axis and potential difference along the x-axis. However, note that a quantity which is independent in a particular situation may be dependent in a different situation. For example, if we were to plot a relation between volume of a gas as we change its temperature, keeping pressure constant, then temperature would be the independent quantity while volume the dependent quantity. Now, notice that in a previous example, temperature was on the y-axis while in this example it is drawn on the x-axis. Or, take for example a graph between pressure of a gas as its volume changes. If we increase the volume available to a fixed mass of gas, keeping the temperature constant, then 
the pressure of the gas would reduce. Thus, volume here is the independent quantity, while pressure the dependent quantity. We therefore plot volume along the x-axis and pressure along the y-axis. Now compare this to the previous example. Here, volume is independent, while in the previous one, volume was dependent. The takeaway point here is that for every situation, one has to determine the independent and dependent variables first, as no physical quantity is always dependent or always independent. Happy graphing now.